This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about whether Bitcoin can actually compete with Visa. But before I do that, I just wanted to let you all know that I've been dealing with a family medical emergency. That's why I've, that's why I've been away for a couple days. And so videos may be intermittent for a week or so while I work through this. So I appreciate I appreciate all the uh, contacts I've gotten and all your well your well wishes. I wanted to co cover this email today. Bitcoin, I, this is the question I got. Bitcoin cannot even, even compete with Visa after 13 years. So how do you expect it to become a global currency when it is still so slow? If we look at Visa, Visa claims they can handle 24,000 transactions per second, which is a disputed number, but it's clear they handle about 1,700 transactions per second, which is quite impressive. We're going to look into that verb, what handles means. By contrast, Bitcoin provides final settlement for only about four to seven TPS or trans transactions per second. So for a newcomer, this obviously seems fairly pathetic. So how many, how many TPS does Visa actually settle? Well, the answer is Visa, Visa handles 1,700 transactions per second, but they actually settle zero, nada, niente. Visa transactions literally take months to audit and settle. And this is what a lot of the people who compare Bitcoin and Visa, they, they don't realize they're actually comparing apples and oranges. So let's think through how it works when you buy something, you purchase something from a store using your Visa card. Visa approves your transaction, money shows up in that store. Maybe we're buying something at Best Buy, for example. Money shows up in Best Buy's bank account or with some other merchant's bank account a few days later. And then you have something like usually about 30 days to pay your credit card bill. You have something like 60 days to contest the transaction. During this whole period of time, Visa has the right to reverse the transaction and debit that merchant's account at any time. You can do a chargeback, for example. So Visa never actually settles transactions. This is one of the, the confusions that people have. The actual settlement of the, the final settlement of these transactions after 30 or 60 or 90 days, whatever it is, it's probably closer to 60, 60 days, that actual settlement takes place on US banking, real, uh, US banking rails. And so what happens at the end of a couple months Banks send each month send money back and forth to each other. Maybe the bank that Visa is using, and then the bank that the the merchant's using, etc. And this is how the final settlement of that transaction is provided. And so this does work, but it's very misleading. You can say Visa Visa handles 1,700 transactions per second, but it actually takes months to achieve final settlement. And this would be the actual settlement of the currency where there's it can't be reversed, et cetera. And as the merchant knows that he gets to keep the money, Visa knows that the money's been paid out. So how many people does it take to make this happen on the Visa network? Well, as of 2020, which was the, the most recent numbers I could find, Visa employed about 20,500 people. But as we said, Visa relies on the US banking system to actually settle these transactions in 2020, there were approximately 1.94 million employees of commercial banks in the U.S. You've got to add that number to it as well. And then you have to realize that this whole thing, the whole U.S. banking system and the imposition of the U.S. dollar on other countries, on our domestic population as well, this requires a military. And this is what happens if you try to sell your oil for something other than uh, something other than U.S. dollars. This is what Saddam Hussein did. This is what uh, Gaddafi did in Libya. You end up getting attacked by the U.S. military. Total personnel U.S. military, uh, according to this this Google search in 2021, was 2.23 million total personnel, 1.3, 1.4 active uh, active duty in the U.S. military. So if you think about it, Bitcoin handles this in a much much more efficient way. Bitcoin transactions are audited and approved roughly every 10 minutes. You certainly don't need as many people involved. It's mostly computers and it's all algorithmically done. You can say that final settlement occurs on the Bitcoin blockchain after about six blocks, which is roughly 60 minutes. At that point, even if you're sending a billion dollars, it's very unlikely that the transaction would be reversed if there was some sort of blockchain reorganization. So that's the number that people use. If you're doing a low value item, 10, 20 minutes is probably fine. But if you're 
if you're talking about sending millions or billions of dollars on the Bitcoin network, it's probably prudent to wait about 60 minutes. So this is the real apples and oranges comparison or the apples to apples comparison. Final settlement being achieved on the Bitcoin network after 60 minutes at the most and more like 60 days on the Visa network. Then we have all these altcoin, all these ETH, so-called ETH killers. For example, Solana, for example, which we talked about a lot on this channel, says that they can do 65,000 65, transactions per second or TPS. And this is this is uh, this may or may not be true, but but Solana itself is a very different animal. It's a centralized venture capitalist coin. It had a very large uh, pre-mine, a large uh, insider allocation. We can see over here that it had, oh, it looks like that doesn't uh, that doesn't work too well in here, but it had about a 48% uh, allocation to the team, to the company, VC purchase tokens, etc. We've already talked about how the venture capitalists are laughing about dumping on retail. So it really doesn't matter. If, you, if you're a newcomer to the space, you might be impressed by a, a, a new crypto that can do 65,000 transactions per second or 65 million transactions per second. Whatever it is, but it's a very different. It's a very different animal. It's a much more centralized, uh, much more centralized coin. And in addition to that, the Solana network has had really a, a pretty pathetic record over the past 12 months. There have been many, many outages, even many outages in 2022. By contrast, Bitcoin has had 99.98 percent uptime uh, since January 3rd, uh, 2009, when the first block was. Mine. So it's much more. It's much more secure. It's much less centralized. Ethereum, ETH, in many ways, when you look at it from this perspective, is the worst of both worlds. It's not very decentralized. You have these oligarchs and insiders like Vitalik that keep changing the monetary policy. In addition, it's much less secure, and it certainly will be even more, even less secure when it moves to proof of stake. It's much less secure and decentralized than Bitcoin. It actually changes its monetary policy over time based on what insiders want to do, usually to, re to reward themselves, whereas Bitcoin's monetary policy was fixed at inception and has never been changed since then. It would be very, very difficult, uh, basically impossible to change it. The 21 million cap and the, the emission schedule of uh, currently 6.25 Bitcoin per block, and that gets halved every four years, this is really written in stone. By contrast, ETH is much uh, is much slower. So it's 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 much less secure and decentralized than Bitcoin, but it's much slower than the ETH killers. And this is why Ethereum is really in this undesirable middle ground. Bitcoin stands alone. There's nothing else like it. Simply because Bitcoin, it's a bearer asset, something like gold. We call it gold 2.0 or digital gold. When you're holding Bitcoin, when you hold your own private keys, when you're holding it on a hardware wallet, there's zero counterparty risk and there's zero settlement risk. Uh, so in many ways, it's it's very much like gold. If you have a gold nugget in your house or your back pocket, uh, people can obviously try to take it by force. It's much easier to steal someone's gold nugget than it is to steal their Bitcoin. Uh, but it is a bearer asset. It can't be it can't be shut off. By contrast, if you have money in a bank account, if you have US dollars or euros or yen in a bank account, or if you have stocks in a brokerage account, there's always this outsider third-party risk. You might call it counterparty risk. You might call it the fact that the government or the broker itself can freeze your account at any time. And uh, Bitcoin is not like this. It's a bearer asset, unlike cash in a bank account, unlike stocks in a brokerage account. Holding Bitcoin, holding your own keys is very much like holding your own gold coin or gold nugget or gold bar. It cannot be turned off, cannot be frozen. Bitcoin still scales very well in spite of having only four to seven transactions per second because these individual transactions, they can be a transaction for $1, you can be sending or receiving $1 or a million dollars or a billion dollars or $10 billion, whatever it is. It doesn't take any additional energy to process larger size uh, denominating fiat, larger size transactions. And this is part of the FUD and this is part of the attack that altcoins do on Bitcoin saying that it doesn't scale. Whereas, in fact, it scales quite well. What appears to be happening is Ethereum is not scaling very well, and certainly Solana is not scaling very well. In addition, Bitcoin, in addition to having this very solid 
base layer that's immutable, the immutable blockchain, uh, this very reliable and secure base layer. It has various level two solutions built on top of it, like we've talked about the Lightning Network, for example. So a Lightning Network can do uh, presumably hundreds of thousands of transactions per second, maybe millions of transactions per second, very low fees, instantaneous, and then those end up settling on the Bitcoin base layer itself. So these would not have the same sort of settlement finality that Bitcoin itself would, uh, but the Lightning Network obviously uses the same token, it uses Bitcoin, and this is another way that Bitcoin scales in addition to having larger transaction sizes. Let me know how this video sounds. I had to go out and buy a, a new microphone to buy this, but I'm just on an old laptop here in a hotel room dealing with these uh, medical issues in my extended family. So let me know how this sounds. Hopefully it's not too, uh, not too much background noise. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate uh, you asking about me and, and my whereabouts and whether I was okay, whether the, whether the feds got me. And it turned out to be much, much simpler than that, just a family medical emergency. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you soon in my next video.